Amen. One of the things I've learned, amen, about celebrating anniversaries and those kind of things, we, amen, are not focused on uh, anniversaries per se, amen. Yeah. We don't want to get caught up, amen, in that. But we just want to celebrate what God has done in this house. Yeah. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah. Many new people, many new ministries, come on. Many great things has come unto this house. Amen. And we just want to celebrate. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to start. Amen. And I wait for Deke to put on something smooth so we can open up in our prayer. Let's give some praise and honor to God for our elect, our bishop, Frederick Brown. Come on and give back some prayer. Amen. Amen. And to our church mother, we love you. Amen. She is our national a missionary mother, Ruth. Come on and give back some praise. Amen. And we take so much pride in our elder. Amen. Our minister. Amen. Show of Brady. Come on and give back some praise. Amen. We thank God for our minister. Grant, wave your hand. Amen. Our deacons are in the house today. Our deacons are in the house today. Amen. And we thank God. Deacon Spruill in the box back there. Y'all say praise the Lord. There you go. Amen. And our deacon stands on base. Did I say it right, bro? There you go. That's what I'm talking about. And we just pray and thank God for each of you. Amen. And we want to give honor where honor is due. We're going to open up. Amen. And I didn't want to start singing, but y'all know in a minute I'm getting ready to go there. Amen. Everybody bow their head. Amen. As we just, you know, are just thanking God. Amen. Just for another day's journey. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you on this great day, God, that you have made with the humbleness in our hearts and Father, thanksgiving upon our tongues. Father, we just thank you, oh God, for you making a way out of no way for us on today, oh God. We ask you, oh God, to bless your people as they enter into your sanctuary, God. We ask God that they come, oh God, to receive, oh God. Come with a praise, oh God, upon their tongues and clapping in their hands, oh God. Oh Father, we know that your joy, amen, abides in us today, God. Father, if there's anything, oh God, that's out of order, God. We ask you, you covenant God, that you would put it in order, God. Oh, God, we love you today. We say thank you. We say glory. We say hallelujah. Oh, God, we ask you now, as we go into this great festival, God, that you would consecrate us. Bless us, oh, God. Let us take no glory of our own, God. But all praises and glory goes unto you, oh, God. Oh, God, we ask you now, God, to, to let us, oh God, come together and reason that we may lift you up, God. You said if I be lifted up from the earth, that you would draw all men unto me. And Father, we ask you now, God, that you would stir us up on the inside, that we can give you glory. We can give you praise, God. This is the day, God, you have made. You told us to rejoice. And God, we're thanking you now. Father, if there's any sick among us, oh God, as this service continue, God, oh, we ask God for your divine healing in the building. Let your spirit and your angels abide in this house, God. We will continue to lift you up. Bless every speaker, each and every person, oh God, that's taking part in this, oh God. We thank you now, and Father, we praise you. In Jesus' name, come on, everybody, let's begin to praise God. Hallelujah. He's worthy, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, we're going to have our Old and New Testament reading. And we are so honored. Amen. And they, amen, have some of the history of this great ministry. Our own deacon and deaconess stag. Y'all give God some praise for them as they come down. I know the plans 
I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places what you say when you don't know what to say. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I was, going to, I was going to talk about all kinds of things this morning, you know, but you might get one of them changed and pull me off the pulpit, but that's not going to stop me. I was going to, I was going to talk about uh, Luke 10, 2, that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. But then I, I was listening to uh, T.D. Jakes this morning, and, and he was talking about being surrounded by the beast. And he took me back to uh, the days of Jesus. And I, I was going to Mark 1, 10 through 13. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heavens being torn open. He saw heavens being torn open. There is a heaven. And the spirits descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended him. You cannot go to a war and test your weapons unless you're out there. Jesus was surrounded by the beast for 40 days. A lot of times we feel like we're out in the world with uh, non-Christians. And that's what our commission is, to be out there. And what I've done is I typed up a little information on a sheet. Members of the church to read it. And then there's a little form below that you can cut off. It's a commitment, your commitment to God and Jesus. To go out there and save souls. That's right. That's right. I've also come up with a witnessing thing. It's just a bunch of flyers that we've done here over the years with uh, uh, our business cards. And uh, those are things that are to be used while we're out there. So I'm going to have these in the back. You guys can take them. So if you're on fire for Jesus, you know, take one, fill it out, get it back to me. We're going to have a little meeting and, and get our plan of attack together. Amen. God for the word of God is life. Amen. And I tell you, they were out there yesterday. Amen. Reaching those, amen, that are lost. Amen. We thank God for each of you that are here. Amen. Can we actually grab an instrument? Amen. We're getting ready to go into our praise and worship. Is that all right? Amen. Ain't nobody mad but them. And we put them under our feet. How about that? Amen. So we are going to, amen, move on, amen, at this time, amen, and our praise and worship. And our goal today is to lift up the name of Jesus. We're not here to lift up man. Y'all ain't saying nothing. We're here to lift up Jesus. We thank and we praise God for our bishop having the vision. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But he couldn't do it by himself, you know. So we just thank God for every one of you. Thank you. 
Hallelujah is the highest praise known unto man that we can render unto heaven. Amen. And that's why we shout hallelujah. Amen. Woo. And we worship. We worship him.
Let us live. He's not wrong.
opportunity. Come on, stand to your feet. We want everybody in the house, amen, to stand. Come on, give us another one. Hey, oh, we now got to stir the flame. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. We want God to bless you. Oh, this. this is it. The of heaven. And on this song, I want you to go to somebody Let and welcome them in pray. this morning into the praises of the Lord.
but we are moving forward in this great ministry. I don't know what y'all come to do today. Hey, hallelujah. But I know I came, amen, to celebrate what God has done, amen. Not what man has done, what God has done. Our bishop, he could have said, I quit. I'm tired. But he chose to run on just a little bit farther. And I tell you, I'm so proud of every one of you that are sitting here today that chose to move forward. Y'all give God some praise again. Over here at CCC, sometimes we don't know what we're going to get. Amen? Sometimes our bishop, he got the wave on. You know what I'm saying? He want to just, you know. Amen. So we just praise and thank God. Without further ado, amen. I am so honored and privileged to have, amen, one of our own, amen, to moderate this great occasion. And I want to say this, amen, not only is she a fireball teacher, y'all ain't saying nothing, but she is also an inspirational writer, writer of two great books. Y'all ain't should be excited about that. Amen. We just ain't got in and everybody. And come on, somebody. Amen. But I, what I love about this woman of God, she walks in the spiritual gifts. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. So she's not going to stand up here and say, next, next. She is led by the Spirit of God, how God desires for her to move this great occasion. Amen. So we have these beautiful programs, but guess what? The spirit, This service is subject to change by the moving. Oh, shut. Y'all better look out now. Holly. Hey, I feel a praise going on. Y'all don't mess with me. Amen. But I tell you, I love you today. Amen. Would we honor, amen, and receive our MC of this first Sunday, our own honorable minister, Cheryl Brady. Amen. I tell you what, the songwriter said that God makes all things new. Amen. He does. And he said that I will follow you forward. So if we living in the past, if we looking back and in the past, we can't follow God, and therefore he can't do nothing new. And so anybody in the house today want to follow him forward. If you want to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I tell you, this is a, a, a blessed day. You may take your seats. Uh, it is just such a, a joy to be uh, in the house uh, of the Lord again. And I tell you, I was sharing with our bishop. I said, you know, I can get used to these 1 o'clock services uh, coming in, coming in the, later on in the afternoon. But I tell you, God is good. And, and we thank him for this opportunity uh, to come together and to celebrate the church anniversary, the seventh church anniversary for Crossover Christian Center. And our theme for this month is, I will do a new thing. I will do, God says, I will do, not man will do, but God will do a new thing. And so our text uh, for this theme is coming from Isaiah 43, and I want to read that for you very quickly so you know exactly what the Word of God says. And so it's Isaiah 43, verses uh, 18 and 19, and the Word of God says, Do not remember the former things. So that's a command. He's saying, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. He says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it. So what God says he's going to do, God is going to do. And so that new thing, God is going to do something new at Crossover. God is going to do something new in your life. God is going to do something new in America. But you got to believe. You got to believe. Any believers out there in the house today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I tell you, we serve an awesome Awesome God. And before I move uh, on with uh, the service today, I uh, want to, to recognize uh, our guests, uh, ministries, churches uh, who are in the house. So uh, for those outside of Crossover Christian Center, 
Uh, for those ministries who are represented here today, I would ask that you have a member uh, of your congregation just stand and identify your ministry for us here uh, at Crossover, if you will. Amen. 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 Good morning, kingdom of God. Amen. Good afternoon. <laughs> The Evangel Apostolic Assembly, praise God, in the house this evening, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Amen, amen, praise God, happy to have you with us this afternoon. Anyone else, anyone else? Well, I see we've got, uh, we have our own uh, Pastor uh, Elizabeth here from uh, Greater Faith Outreach. Amen, amen. <laughs> well, we want to recognize you anyway. We want to recognize you anyway. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Due first of all to our Lord and Savior Amen. Jesus Praise Christ, to our own Bishop Frederick Brown, and to our First Lady Pastor Thalia Brown, to our guest uh, Pastor, who's going to be giving us a word from the Lord today, Pastor Perter, and to all who are here who hold an office in one of the fivefold ministries, and everyone that's present today, we acknowledge you and recognize your presence. And we do appreciate you coming out for our service this afternoon. Today is a great day to be alive. Anybody agree with that? Today is a great day to be alive. And it said, this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice. So it's not an option. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day of celebration. Anybody like to celebrate out there? This is a day of celebration here at Crossover Christian Center. Today is the first of four Sundays in May, where we begin our month-long commemorative celebration of the seventh anniversary of Crossover Christian Center. We commemorate, or rather we remind ourselves during this time about the goodness of the Lord and all that he has done. Because you see, it's not about what we have done. It's not about what man has done, but what God has done. And so you see, it was a good thing. The day that God saw an eternity pass, a church named Crossover Christian Center that would be established and led by our senior pastor that Christ gave this ministry, our own Bishop Frederick Brown and his wife, co-pastor Thalia Brown. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, not if man be lifted up, but if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. When Crossover Christian Center was established in 2004, it became a means by which God could lift the Savior up here in Lakewood and throughout the surrounding community. So that's what we're all about at Crossovers, lifting up the name of Jesus. And I tell you today, saints, it is a great honor and a privilege for me to stand before you today as your mistress of ceremony, moderator, whatever term you want to use. But the real deal is... I'm just a timekeeper. I want to make sure that we stay on track and on time for the service. Is that all right? Is that all right? So you can call me a mistress of ceremony, but back in your mind, just say she's a timekeeper. All right. This is a special day for me because although I have been a member of Crossover since November 2008, this is the first occasion I've had to celebrate the church anniversary on this side of the water, on American soil. And so I'm thankful to God to be in the house today to be able to celebrate with you this great occasion. So until January of this year, for those of you who aren't aware, I have been laboring in the harvest fields of Christ in Kuwait. And so now God has brought me back. And you see, the Lord had me on loan 
to the Army for 28 years. See, the Army thought they owned me, but God had me on loan to the Army for 28 years. And come 31 May, God is going to sever that arrangement with the Army. And he's going to allow me to retire. And I praise God for that. So, you see, I will still be a soldier in the army of the Lord. It's just that I will no longer be wearing a camouflage uniform. Amen, amen. And I tell you the truth, I kind of like my new digs. What you think? What you think? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I tell you, as I said, this is a time of, of celebration. And, you know, we, we ought to have fun in the house of the Lord. You see, we can have some good times in Christ in the house of the Lord. And so we're going to celebrate our anniversary today, and, and we're going to have some, some great and wonderful things. We've got a great uh, program lined up for you uh, today. And what we want to do is be ever so mindful that uh, we do have a time limit uh, because we have brothers and sisters in Christ who are coming after us for use of the sanctuary. So you know in the house of God, everything is done decent and in order. And so if you have a speaking part, the only exception, of course, will be the one who brings forth the word. So if you're limited to three to five minutes, we're going to try and hold you to that. But the man of God, he gets at least two or three more minutes than that, okay, to bring forth the word. So we want to move forward with our program today. Next, we will have our welcome by our own um, Sister Rose Evans, and then followed by uh, a response from one of our visiting churches. Amen. 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 Yeah. 
Welcome, Mary. Amen. 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 Then we will have our response from one of our guest uh, churches. Pastor Frederick Brown had given his life to Christ as a, a number of years after entering the military and was committed to serving the Lord as he was led by the Holy Spirit. However, amid his educational pursuits, Frederick felt an unusual relentless tugging on his heart and through much prayer, he came to recognize that God was calling him to a higher walk in his spiritual life. With humility, he graciously was ordained as a pastor at the Crossover Christensen Church in December 2004. In that same month, he gave his first worship service, consisting of only eight committed and curious individuals. It was held in his wife's salon located in Parkland, Washington. Pastor Brown's passion for helping hurting people has been revealed through his involvement with the CCCC which included a clothing ministry, an amb ambitious and widespread prison ministry, as well as active participation within the local community. Pastor Brown served on several boards in Lakewood, including the Lakewood Area Shelter Association and Lakewood African American Police Advisory Committee. Among his other admirable attributes, Pastor Brown's unique speaking style, his passion-filled sermons, Tain's starting startling insights along with fresh and inspirational commentary that transcend both racial and gender barriers. The diverse audience since is able to understand and apply the teachings of Christ as well as experience God's restoration, re reconciliation, and healing power in their lives. His undaunted willingness to square, squarely confront controversial issues often considered off limits in churches and dear Pastor Brown to the people in this community. The anointing upon his life has led the Lakewood community in 2008 to adopt Pastor Brown's church as America's promise. In par partnership with his wife, First Lady and Pastor Brown are committed to bringing the good news of Jesus Christ to people literally all over the world, thereby changing one person at a time. What has transpired over the past seven years for Pastor Brown and his ministry has been a leap of faith. He is a servant of God who continues to say yes to the Lord's call on his life and by doing so has positively affected and impacted the lives of thousands with his gift to turn a glimmer of hope into opportunity. If I can help just one person along this troubled way, just then my one. living shall not be in vain. The Lord spoke to Pastor Brown and moved on his heart and spirit to the office of Bishop. He took the pray and searched his heart. After a period of time, he spoke with 
One of his spiritual advisors, Apostle C.R. Adams, the Lord made room in 2012. He was consecrated as the Bishop of Crossover Christian Center. Thank you. Amen. History is good, and we need to know the history. But his story, capital H-I-S story, the story of Christ, we all need to know that one as well. So praise God. Thank you, Brother Jamal, for that reading of our church history. We will now have a three to five minute reading by our own sister, Sosefina, who herself is a, a just a walking testimony of the goodness of God and his faithfulness and all the things that he has done in her life. So Sister Sosefina, come forward, if you would, and give us a three to five minute uh, testimony of what your church means to you, amen. Praise God, to God be the glory. Good afternoon, church. As uh, Minister Cheryl was announcing this, uh, I have three to five minutes. I won't be there walking and I'll be looking at the The Lord bless the bishop and the church. As I'm looking into this uh, program, it says, what my church means to me. Um, first of all, I have to say that uh, God led me and my family to this church. So if I can say what what I need to say about what my church means to me, it actually starts within my heart because that's what God has said. That's where the church comes in. Not the church that we have over here as men and as we see in the natural eye. But in the eyes of God, that's where the church begins in your heart. Because I was searching in my heart for the church. So as I was saying, past you know, in a day with my family, you know, my husband Johnny, we were arguing right outside that street out there, <laughs> and just uh, you know, just cussing at each other in our language, just knowing. <laughs> so um, as God led me in my heart, you know, the scripture said, God sees your heart, no matter what you say or what you do in life. Come on. As much as you want to inspire people by what you do or how you act or how you, you know, sway yourself to speak or, you know, or not to dress the way you want to, to impress them. But God just sees it in you and that's your spiritual side. So if I can really have to respond that three to five minute, Lord help me God, because I already spoke my heart before I even came here because I, I got the phone call yesterday. So it, kind of like dawn in my mind as I was just willing down on these moments that I only had two to three minutes. And I just said, God, you know, help me to speak. Whatever that comes out of my mouth, make it that it comes out from your Holy Spirit, not from me. But let it be that you speak through my heart so I can speak through my what's in my spirit. So what the church means to me really is what my heart led me because that's what my church was. But the crossover the Christian ministry it's the church that God had let me and my family in. And so uh, we joined a church here last year in the summer. And I, I just, uh, I've been seeing a lot of tremendous changes. And, uh, you know, I was praising with my mom's church yesterday morning. And the pastor was saying, because one of the people at the church was saying, how, do, how, how can you say to a person that comes to church and don't even feel like praise and worship, don't even want to feel like lifting up your hands, what do you say? The pastor stood up and said, well, in the word, God says, if all men want to praise me how you feel, I would never give praise. But faith, that's where it comes. So my faith lead me to this church because God spoke in my heart. Because in my heart, I wanted a church for my family. So that's where my church, where it says what my church means to me, it means a whole lot more than what I can stand here and say to you. So it means so much that I have to say thank you, Jesus, for leading me to this direction. Because it's teaching me, because I'm struggling every day as I see things. Natural in the eye, and I'm trying to walk in the spiritual because 
it's a warfare. Not not necessarily with our flesh, but it's you know, in our in our spirit. So if I want to say something to our congregation this afternoon, ask yourself what your church means to you. Because as we are all fellowshipping right now in this church, under this room, so thank God for that. Because each day you honor it. Just take it and be blessed and be praised by it. Because that's where your church, if this building was not here, where is your church? It's the church is where you come and you, you pursue or you look, are you dress, or is the church is what you feel inside that you are connecting with that one person, which is your heavenly father. If I can honestly say, Pastor Frederick Brown Bishop, you know, my family is so highly blessed because you blessed us. You opened your doors that God has given to us for all these months and turning to a year in a couple more years, you know, and um, I'm doing and I'm always believed. I wanted to say that. Uh, don't let it be glorified and men's eyes. Don't let it be glorified unto God. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And it is indeed a valid question that she posed to us for us to search our hearts and, 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 and determine what does our church mean to us? What does your church mean? Uh, mean to you? What does the church of Christ mean to you? So it's really not about this earthly thing, but it's about a spiritual thing, the church of Christ. And so what does it mean to you? And so if it means a lot, how are we living our lives? And if it doesn't mean a hill of beans, then our lives will reflect that as well. So praise God and thank you, Sister Sosafina, for those words of encouragement on what your church means to you. We praise God for Pastor Purdy and the members of his congregation from Living Word Christian Church who have come to bless us on today. Amen. 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 My sister, I like that cry. The hallelujah cry back there. Amen. Praise God. We welcome you and, and we thank you for, for coming and being a part of our celebration here today. At this time, we would ask that Living Word give us uh, a selection, if you will. Amen. 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 All give thanks unto our Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. All give thanks unto the Lord.
All right. Man. Always got to have a ram in the bush, as they say. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. But even if the mic didn't work, the program would continue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, uh, we're going to have uh, some words of encouragement from uh, Apostle Adams from the New Christ Supernatural Temple of the Liberance Church. Amen. Come on, church family, and shout glory. glory. Come on and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, we're excited up in here, amen. Honey, yeah. this is something God has done, amen. Yeah. And we praise and thank God. Y'all know y'all got the ring-a-ling-a-ling -a thing going on here. But we just give honor and praise unto God, amen, who is the head of our life, amen, amen. to the honorable Bishop Frederick Brown. Y'all give God some praise, amen. amen. To my crossover family. Come on, shout glory. glory. And to our house, we greet you from Christ's temple. Oh, that's why. That's why. I think we have a special. Did y'all know we have special people? Sometimes. <laughs> and so, um. I was trying to figure that out. I said, what's going on? You know. But anyhow, I'm not technical. But we praise and we thank God. Amen. That you are here today. But we honor, amen, our Pastor Elizabeth and to this honorable man of God, Living Word Ministry. Man. Amen. This brother here. I'm telling you, Living Word, if nobody else is making your job. Over Christian ministry, amen. I'm Big Mama. Is that all right? That's all right. I'm walking here. I'm, I'm trying to move that way, but I'm Big Mama in spirit, amen. And I praise and thank God, amen, for coming to this place, amen, and finding nothing but love, amen. And as apostle and article of God, we stand on those things that we govern and bring things to order, amen. And I'm so honored, amen, today to stand before you to let you know this house is in order. Amen. We don't care what the devil said, amen, our deacon yesterday. They tickled me, amen. They had a group and they was out, you hear me? And I said they were witnessing and doing the great work of the Lord. But I encourage you out there, Bishop, amen. You know I love you, amen. I call him dad sometime. I call him son sometime. Yo, brother, amen. But this is truly the work in the hand of God. And we thank each of you, amen, that have entered into these doors. God is sending in nothing but workers and laborers, amen. And I'm telling you, Telling you they hate about right now, but that's okay. We are the hot spot. Y'all ain't saying that. Yeah. And so to this house, amen. Crossover Christian Center, you are one of the greatest churches on this side of heaven. Yeah. Love you. Yeah. We, thank, we thank Apostle Adams for uh, those words of encouragement. And uh, we're going to have a slight change uh, to our program, uh, looking at the time. And again, we want to be mindful uh, that we do have another service uh, that will occupy the sanctuary uh, at uh, almost at 15.30, going back to my military. Uh, uh, 3.30 for you uh, non-military folks out there, 3.30 uh, this afternoon. So at this time, what we want to do is have our words of wisdom uh, by Pastor uh, Elizabeth from Greater Faith Outreach, uh, followed by uh, our offering, uh, and which will be led by uh, Pastor Perter uh, this afternoon, and then we will have a, a song of preparation or a selection by uh, his church, his choir, and then we will go into our word for this evening. Is that all right? Everyone to stand in honor of our 
made him a free. He had to sacrifice everything. He believed in God. And this was this I see this man doing, sacrificing. No matter what people say or what people are saying about him, he continued to move in the things of God. And that's what we have to do. Amen? He said, take this gift and lay it on the altar. We have to take those things and lay it on the altar and trust God to work it out. Sometimes we try to do things in our own way, in our own strength, and it's just not working. But I thank God for freedom today. I thank God for the precious blood of Jesus today. I thank God that I walk by faith, not by sight. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. If everything was smooth and worked out on paper, step by step, it would be faith. Sometimes we walk in the darkness not knowing what to do, what to say, but God will take us through it every step of the way. So, Lord, here's my hand. Just leave me. Just leave me. Leave me, leave me. And that's what we do. Through it all, through persecution, through trials, through tribulation, we just have to trust him and hold on. When the fire comes up, we got to hold on him even the more. Because I've been, we all been through the fire, and I know what the fire is about. But you have to keep on holding on. When my son was missing for 20 years, I had to keep on preaching until God manifested it. He told me he was going to do it. He didn't give me a time or day, but I had to hold on to him. And trust him. Man couldn't do it for me. God did it for me. Trust him with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We thank praise for Elizabeth for those words of wisdom. I tell you, once a preacher... Always a preacher. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. At this time, we would ask our Pastor Purdy to come forward for our offering, and then immediately following him, his choir will come forward and render a uh, selection in preparation for our message today. Let your say amen. Amen. Oh, come on, let your say amen like you really mean it. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand for you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. We have come this afternoon to this portion of the service for We know that we serve a God that ain't broke. Y'all ain't saying that. Let me say that again. The God that we serve ain't broke. Amen. So his people shouldn't act like he's broke. Come on, man. Y'all ain't saying that. Uh, this is a celebration of what God is doing in the vineyard on this side of the vineyard. Amen. Amen. And we knew when we headed this way, we was coming to fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. And let me say this, and I know we hear it frequently, and we're going to keep on hearing it until Jesus come back and sell up. You know, there's going to come a sell up time. Oh, yeah, selling up. Uh, yeah. It takes finances in all of what we do. Even if you are homeless and live on the street, it takes finances. Y'all ain't saying that. To live on the streets. What am I saying? It costs everywhere. It costs you everywhere. But because we serve Christ Jesus, who everything belonged to, we should be able to give back a portion of what he has blessed us with. I want to encourage all of us, I want to encourage uh, Crossover Christian Center that uh, this is your bishop's uh, day. Y'all ain't saying that, y'all. It, it, it sounded like I was in the operating room, man, and you could hear a pen drop on the phone because the doctor said, don't nobody move. <laughs> but dig down beyond those George Washington's 
and, and, and seek a few of them grants. And Franklin, Hamilton. Uh, see, George Washington travels a whole lot in the church more than any other president. Amen, that praise God. That's right. Yeah, God, it's saying that. Come on, Phil. <laughs> Huh? Amen. The, the other presidents, they go to the airport. <laughs> they go to the fancy restaurants. Right. You ain't saying that. Order, I know I'm right, huh? Huh? But, but see, like George, just hang around the church. So let us uh, add to George. Amen. That's right. Can, can we do that? Uh, whatever you was planning, planning on giving, give some more. Amen. Uh, and, and, and the God that we serve will bless you some more. Amen. And this is better than the than the uh, soup commercial where he said, "I guarantee it. Uh, God will bless you." I haven't met nobody that's not standing knocking on God's door asking for something. Everybody in here is asking God for something. It's not the same something, but you're asking him for something. Hmm? So if you want God to do better, not that he ain't doing better, but if you want God to do better, then we, and that ain't French, have to do better. Amen. So we're going to ask that the urchins will come. I think I've said enough on that. I think y'all got the message. That's you know, right. Hallelujah. I ain't telling you not to give George, but add to George. Amen. Who is George? George Washington. Add to him. He's on the one dollar bill. What is that? What is that? Obey the urchin. Were there any reports also, Bishop, that was going to take place today? No. Yes. No. In any re ministry reports or anything? Okay. Amen. Get in the hands of the nurses. And let, let the people of God be excited about giving. Amen. Be excited about giving. chance stepped on your toes when I was talking about giving to the Lord. Just say ouch. Just say ouch. It'll be alright. God is still good.
get that the substance. We pray a special blessing upon him or her right now that they be able to give the next time around. And Father God, we're going to be so careful giving you all honor, praise, and glory. In thy darling son, in Jesus' name we do pray. That church say amen. 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 Uh, I think that the MC has said that the uh, Living Word Christian Church is going to render a selection. Amen. Then it will be an introduction. I don't want to be doing your job now, but, but is that what's going to take place? Amen. amen. So I'm going to put this mic back down.
Lord Church. Come on now. I said praise the Lord Church. I didn't say praise the Lord Living Dead. This is the church of the living God. Amen. We didn't come here to have a funeral today. We came here to celebrate Jesus. And if you came here to celebrate Jesus, get on your feet and get a lot of hand clap here for today. Come on now. He did better than that. We get ready for the man of God, the man of God get ready to come and preach. And here we can't even give God a praise, so I can imagine what's going to happen when he come up here. But you got a chance to redeem yourself. I said, give Lord a hand clap in the house here today. Amen. And go ahead and give yourself a hand clap. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, Y'all may have your seat. Well, I tell you, it's always good to have my brother in the house. Uh, you know, anytime I see my brother, I see sticky love. And I know anytime I go there, I know I'm always at home. When I walk in, I don't need no invitation to show up. I just walk in. I just might be traveling down the street and just all of a sudden pass by and just turn in and park and just come up and say a word. I don't need to be on the program because the program ain't got nothing to do with me. Because when God speaks, we don't want to get caught up in programs and agenda and things because we miss what he's doing. I tell you, it's a blessing to have him in the house. I was sharing with Minister Cheryl the first time I met my brother, and I tell you, it was at our first anniversary. How ironic. He was at the first and now he's at the seven. Matter of fact, I don't think he missed either one. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I tell you, I tell you, you know, if there's anyone that's faithful. Now, I had a lot of people in my life, but I began to cut people out of my life because, uh, and then I'm serious with this, because you see our theme here says, God is getting ready to do a new thing. And if we're not willing to change with God, we're going to miss what God is doing. Because sometimes we hold on to things that we should have let go five years ago. And we wonder why we're not going anywhere. Because you, you turn up what was a blessing into a curse. Amen. I don't have a problem telling people, hey, look, you need to move on. Because, you know, he might be taking you to exit 36, but I think he's taking me on up to exit 200. So, you know, what God has for me, I know he don't have for you. And I don't say that in a, you know, braggadocious way. I say that with all sincerity because we need to know how to speak what God says. And we have a tendency to kind of help God out and kind of water things down because we're worried about how people might receive it. But I, don't, I grew past that a couple of years ago. I'm, I'm bold now and I'm getting a little older too. So, you know, I don't have a problem. I say, well, I don't need a church. I got a church. I can go preach in my church. Amen. Amen. So I just want to say a few words about my brother here. I tell you, he's, I tell you, yeah, if there's any, I tell you, I think about Bishop Jake's schedule. I think about, you know, when I listen to Bishop Jake's, you know, he's all over the place, going places. And I see this brother, his schedule is busy than T.D. Jake's. I tell you, you know, I have to get on the schedule. That's why we don't set schedules. We just say, hey, we call, hey, what you doing, man? Can you busy? Okay, I got it. I called him about two weeks ago. Anybody else, they be talking about, well, why you didn't give me 30 days? I say, well, I didn't have 30 days. You know, I didn't even think about it 30 days. It just came to my mind right now. And I decided to make a call. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. I tell you, he always accepted the invitation. I tell you, every time I go over to his church, I tell you, you know, I'm received with open arms. And, uh, I tell you, if there's anyone that I know that's faithful, and I'm talking about a real brother. I'm not talking about one of them fly by nights, you know, the one that, you know, they kind of, you know, show you all this in the crowd. But, you know, this brother, I can call him any time of the night. And he's still real. And he won't ask, where are you? He'll just say, what you need? And I'm on the way. And I, I thank God for you. And I thank God for your wife. I know she's over there still serving. That's why I sleep good at night. Because I know she's on the front line. I just serve. <laughs> Hey, tell us, said hello. We sent out love there. We're praying for her. and things. I tell you, Pastor Perda to be doctor. Is it okay if I just steal it? You know, I, I can't keep nothing. Don't tell me anything if you don't want me to feel what it's going out. Because I can't hold water. It just grows in and flows out. <laughs> I tell you, you know, that's that's thing. You know, we have to be, if we're going to lead God's people, we got to continually be in a learning state. We just can't get to a place and just park and come out I arrive 
And, and that's when God just say, okay, you just push you over the side because you be, you are getting stale. Because what about the people that are following you? They might want to go to another level. That's, right. that's why we can't stop when we lead God, people. We got to continue on even when we get tired. And I tell you, he's uh, teaching a uh, seminary. And he flies back and forth to make sure, you know, that everything is decent and in order and things. You can tell when God is in something because things tend to work out. They don't just get to a point and fizzle out. I tell you, they endure the tough times. And I tell you, my brother, I can see the times where, you know, when you was going through it, but you never showed it. But you just pressed your way. And I just, I, I sit there and chat with him. I remember the time where he, where he was telling me, he said, man, my congregation, man, they're in the hospital here and there. And I tell you, he didn't call anyone. He made all the visits himself up and through the midnight. So y'all didn't know I know that, did you? But that's, but you know, as pastors, we got to be praying for each other because we know, we know what goes on in the ministry. And if you're not ready to go all the way, don't even get out there because it says count the cost. And I tell you, he has count the cost. And I tell you, I can tell when my anniversary time, because when he had one, I know it's time for me to have one. Amen. Because we running right about the same. A few months. Uh, you know, he's he a, he a little older than I am. I think. <laughs> but it's all good and thing. We always have fun when we come to meet. And uh, I just want you all to just stand to your feet here today. And uh, I'm not going to belabor this. And uh, I tell you, you're about ready to receive a word from the man of God. And uh, where, where's my scripture at? Y'all thought I forgot, didn't you? Y'all you know, know anybody that comes to preach here? We, we have one question for them. One question and one question only. Because it's in times like this that we need to hear what God has deposited in the man. Go ahead and read it. Minister Brady. This is the question. Say again. Read. Read it loud. Let's go. Amen. Uh, Pastor Dr. Perda, that is the word that we are asking you today. Is there any word from the Lord? Church, we we'll stretch out your hand toward our pastor here this afternoon. Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just ask that you would anoint him with the triple fold anointing, Lord, as he come to minister to your people, Lord. Let your anointing flow like never before, Lord, and let him speak out of his heart, Lord, what you spoke to him in his quiet time, Lord. And we thank you for all that he's going to deposit in here today, Lord, and we give you praise for him. Come on, church, give, it, give Lord a hand clap today and receive the man of God here this afternoon. Pastor Michael Curta of Living Word Christian Center. Let's church say amen. amen. Let's church say amen again. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand praise. Yes, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, you might find that. And we want to thank God for uh, an opportunity to be here this afternoon. And giving honors to God who is truly the head of my life and I believe it's safe to say over all our lives. He is the head over all our lives. He is the head over all our lives. Amen. Amen. Because if you the head, then you're in trouble. Because God don't bow down to us. We bow down to him. We thank God for this privilege and honor uh, as uh, Bishop shared with us, uh, we've been knowing each other for s some number of years now. And the fellowship has grown and is a blessing to the Living Word Christian Church family, uh, as well as a blessing, I believe, is humbly safe to say to the Crossover Christian Center family. Amen. 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 We thank God for. Living Word Christian Church Choir, one, one of the greatest choirs Yay! in this country. One of them. 
We thank God for our urshers on duty this afternoon. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the mothers that travel with us this afternoon. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for the faithful church members that uh, didn't jump on I-5 and keep going home. <laughs> they came to be a part of the celebration. Amen. We lost a few folks. They looked like they was headed this way. <laughs> and I had said to them, I said, now, uh, the service isn't going to be all day, and we should still have about five hours of daylight when it's over. <laughs> Somebody, I guess they wanted six or seven hours a day. Out of they ain't here. Amen. But anyway, we thank God for those that did come and want to solicit your prayers and, and encourage you to continue to pray for uh, our beautiful, lovely First Lady Coachella Herder, my wife that is in Afghanistan, in Bagram Air Force Base. Uh, doing a great work for the United States government, but more Amen. importantly, doing a great work for God. Amen. Telling, compelling men and women to come to Jesus. Amen. Amen. She's not a U.S. soldier. She's one of God's soldiers. She don't care a firearm, but she's Suited up in the arm of God. Amen. Y'all don't hear me. Uh, we talk. We talk on a regular basis. You know, she got one of them high tech cell phones, and we just call each other, and we'll talk so long to the overseas operator disconnect us. That's how we keep track of how long we've been talking. I just call her right back like we cross the street. <laughs> or vice versa, we went through talking. Might have been an hour or two, but we were still talking. We still got that date thing going on. Amen. We said the honeymoon is over with when we called it over. <laughs> we ain't cashed our chips in eight plus years later. We still going on strong. Amen. Trying to help us here now. Amen. But uh, and, and we don't. We, we do want to thank God uh, for all these pastors that are here this afternoon and ministers, evangelists to the deacons, to all the ministers here across over Christian Center, and to uh, uh, Bishop, First Lady Thalia, that I understand is out of town, doing a great work for the Lord, and to my good friend and brother, uh, Bishop Frederick Brown. Let's give him a big hand, praise. Hey! It's good to be here. I'm serious. It's good to be here. Yeah. Celebrating what God has done and is doing right here in the city of Lakewood, Amen. in the state of Washington, on the Pacific Northwest Rim. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, and I want to encourage uh, Bishop Brown and, and the entire body of Christ that uh, there are a lot of doors that are being closed in Washington and across the country. A lot of pastors are saying, I ain't taking it no more. And they're closing up the doors. Mm -hmm. And it's something to think about when folks get fed up with folks to the point to where they'll walk away from God. You got to be in this till Jesus come back. Y'all don't hear me. And that ain't just for the pastors and the bishops and the preachers, but that's for the entire body. You got to hold on and to see what the end is going to be like. That's a new movie that just came out. I ain't even went to see it yet, but I'm planning on trying to get it next week when ain't a whole bunch of folks going and stuff. That new one with the, with, uh, 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 y'all hit me out, the Avengers, what is it? Huh? Yeah, with Thor and all them in it, you know, when I was a little boy and they had the club and stuff, you know, all that kind of stuff. Captain, yeah, uh, some superheroes. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go check them out, but my point is, is that we serve the true superhero. Yes, we do. He can do all they can do, and some more. Yes, he can. Come on now, I 
know I'm in the right place. Uh, but Jesus is Lord. Uh, Jesus is Lord. Lord what? Lord over my life and your life. Now, am I in the right place? I ain't going to be before this afternoon very long because you do have a dynamic bishop, pastor, preacher in Bishop Frederick Brown. But the invitation was to come and share a word, and, and it was read, is that a word from the Lord? Yes, it is. Not my word, but God's word. I've learned that sometimes folks get mad about God's word. But did you come to find out that God don't care? God don't care if folks get mad and do that thing like that at you, walk out the door. Uh, uh, God bless the Apostle Adam, but when she said you call me Big Mama, I had a flashback. I thought about my Big Mama. <laughs> God, Big Mama, she do me like that, boy. I'm gonna get you. Uh, amen. 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 You you have a a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful theme for the work that God is doing here on this corner. Uh, let me put my glasses on so I can see. I can see. You know, with my glasses on, I can see better. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You ain't got glasses, and then, you know, you're doing fine, but keep living. <laughs> Eventually, I guarantee it. Uh, you're going to need some eyewear. Uh, and you'll find out that all eyewear ain't the same. Okay, Y'all pray with me as you're praying for me. Let's do this. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to share your word with your people. Yeah, and Lord, we thank you that we can humbly right now feel in our gut and say, I've been with the Lord all day long. And Father God, we pray and ask that you would take thy servant Michael Perna and move him into the background. That you will be in the front ground. That when your people look here, they won't see Michael Perna, but they'll see you using Michael Perna as an instrument to tell his your people. For yes. thus says the Lord. And we're going to be so careful. Give you all on praise and glory. Amen. In Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. 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 You know, uh, I did by way of coming this way. Uh, and you notice I got a few pockets on my uh, outfit here, my robe that the church got for me. And I got a few amens in here if y'all don't say amen. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes you have to come. <laughs> have to be ready. Anything. <laughs> we uh, your thing. I will do a new thing, and also. God will do a new thing. Yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah. Now, when you woke up this morning, God was doing a new thing. Yeah. You don't believe me? Check the internet, Bing, or Yahoo, or Google. Somebody didn't wake up today. Yeah. Somebody died in their sin. But we have an opportunity uh, uh, to repent. Y'all yeah, know what repent is. Uh, uh, repent means you got to do some turning. Yeah. Turn and say, Lord, have mercy yes, on me. Yeah. Yeah. I hope I'm making sense to you. Your thing said God will do a new thing. Yeah. And, and it came from the book of uh, Isaiah now. And I, let me apologize a little word here real quick. Uh, I have... Uh, my Bible with me. And the reason why I have it is that this morning uh, when I left home, I left my iPad. The church bought me an iPad. Uh, back in February, and I got about four or five different 
Bibles downloaded. And this is probably the first time they see me without it, so I want them to know it was left at home. <laughs> Not intentionally, but unintentionally. And if I would have went back to try to get it, I would have been later than I already was. Uh -huh. But I had old faithful. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I forget the charge that I paid. Right. Right. I can go back to old faithful. It might come a time that, the, like the time we're living in, when the world might decide to shut down all the computer networks, uh, and that iPad might go on with it. But old faithful, uh, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, don't, don't throw all your paperbacks away. Uh, don't let technology ruin you and set you up. Y'all hear me? See, see, God is doing a new thing, but he ain't throwing away his old thing. Y'all yes, right. yes, right. yes, right. yes, right. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Yes, right. You know, uh, Isaiah, Hallelujah. something about Isaiah is that uh, Isaiah had a tendency to uh, tell it like it is. Some of y'all that don't know him and stuff, I'm going to try to introduce him. And we ain't going to stay with him because he ain't the Savior. But he was encouraging them in ancient times that there is one coming uh, that's greater than him. And I just want to be a vessel used by the Lord today to continue to encourage God, folks, that there is a greater one than Isaiah. But I say, have a story to tell, and I want to look to your scriptures here, uh, 43, 18, and 19, and just read that briefly in your ear here, Isaiah 43, 18, 19. He says, yeah. remember ye not the former thing, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Is that what it say? And and I want you all to turn with me, if you could, to Second Corinthians uh, chapter five. Second Corinthians chapter five. Uh, verse 17, I believe it is. And if you're there, I say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And if you're still looking, say wait a minute. See, if I had the iPad, it would, I've been there by now. I thank living word for it. It, 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 it hooked up. It's got commentary in the bottom of it. It just breaks it all down and stuff. But I walked out and left it. And I believe that I just wasn't supposed to have it this afternoon. Amen. Amen, because I had old faithful. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, when you get that, it reads as thus. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Again, may the Lord have blessed to the readers, hearers, and doers of his most precious and divine word. For those of you that were standing, you may be seated. We should, we should be glad and deliriously happy yeah. when it's time to celebrate the goodness of Jesus. Uh -huh. You know, people spend big money to go see the Mariners play. Uh -huh. Huh? And, and they be deliriously happy uh -huh. if somebody get on base. Uh -huh. I didn't say you the home run. Uh -huh. They show out then. But they're deliriously happy even if somebody get on base. 
Because they know if you get on base, there's an opportunity for somebody else to keep on hitting, keep on hitting. Eventually, you'll get into home. So every time we come to serve Jesus, we should be deliriously happy because it's an opportunity for us to get a little bit more of God's word on the inside and equip us to go back into that dangerous, crooked, evil world that will take us from this time this week to this time next week, y'all understand? Every time we come into the house of God, it's a new family. Yeah, it's a new thing. Uh, the Sunday school lesson for many across the nation this morning talked about how God was feeding his folks manna. How uh, he was feeding them a food that will fill their belly and their spirit at the same time. Uh, right now, I'm, like, I'm trying to take this opportunity to just feed us just a little bit of God's word. Uh, am I in the right place? The prophet Isaiah was a man with a mission. In order to serve God and serve God faithfully, you got to be a man and woman of God with a mission. What kind of mission? It's got to be God's mission. God will do a new thing with folks on his mission. The problem is too many folks try to do their own mission. And that's the reason why they miss him because mission impossible. The Lord has shown Isaiah a glimpse of his glorious throne and placed a call on his life. God showed him that. Just like God showed every pastor, bishop, preacher, mercy, evangelist here this afternoon, God gave you a glimpse when he started calling you. He said, he said there's going to come times on this journey when folks going to talk about you. They going to lie on you. They going to say, you ain't going nowhere. Uh, anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, and, and even your neighbors, when they see you get up on a regular Sunday and win, so whenever you go to Bible study and when you come to church, hey, there you go again. Uh, you, you ought to roll out the red carpet and say, you come go with me to my father's house. In my father's house. Yeah. Oh yeah, we, we got to be serious about this witness business. It's time out for picking and choose who we want to invite to God's house. But everybody's welcome in God's house. God is willing to do a new thing. God is doing a new thing. That's right. Hallelujah. That's new under the sun. So he goes on to say, as a prophet. Isaiah spoke God's word in season and out of season. What do you mean? When they wanted to hear it and when they didn't want to hear it. I know somebody probably said, Timothy said that there's nothing new under the sun. Isaiah just said it a different way, but I'm mixing it up here a little bit. Because God is good. Uh, and he's good all the time. And he's good even when we don't say he's good. Uh, if he don't do nothing else for us the rest of the day, he woke us up this morning. Started us on our way. Clapping in our hands, little jogging, running in our feet, smile on our face, food on our table, uh, a roof over our head, clothes on our back. So Isaiah heard God say, Preaching to them when they want to hear it and when they don't, don't want to hear it. But you know, for the most part, Isaiah's words from the Lord were confrontational. Confrontational. Folks were like, you all up in my business. You all up in my mustard. You talking about me. Huh? Well, God always talking about us. Huh? And guess what? God ain't the only one talking about us. Uh, let me say this too, real humbly and lovely. The church folks talk about the church folks. You know, you, God, you've been praying.
praying to God for a breakthrough, and then God does a new thing and give you a breakthrough, and you start getting your shout on and your praise on. Somebody said, "Man, is he got to do all that? Is she got to do all that? Yeah, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. Yeah, I got to do all that. He heard my prayer." Nobody mad but the devil. That's all. That's all. Every night, then, the devil get on the church folks. Hey. How, did, how did the devil get in the church? The folks bring him in. That's why right. right. we had to preach it when they want to hear. Yeah. Preach it when they don't want to hear. Yeah. Preach the devil out of Preach the hell out of he says here the words were confrontational and the word also was exhortation and warning words you know when you be exalting God on your job and you be trying to encourage your unsaved co-workers you got some uh, you might not admit it but you be like Got to go work around them. That's your assignment. That is your assignment. God strategically put them there and you there. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You talking about God will do a new thing? Yes, he will through you. <laughs> you got to say, Lord, here I am. You got to say, use me, Lord. I'm willing. Uh, guess what? God heard you. That's the reason why you got. Oh uh, yeah. That's the reason why you got that 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 that, that worker, huh? Or that boss, huh? That says, "Oh yeah, what 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 your God doing for you now?" And you need to just take a deep breath uh, and say, "Lord, it's time for you to use me now." Oh yeah, and God will do. You don't call on Him after you don't open up your mouth. You call on Him before you open your mouth. Uh, when you get up in the morning and fall down on your knees before you start your day, Lord, you know everything I'm gonna, that's going to take place with me today. So I need you. I need you. I'm not ashamed to let you know I need you this morning, Lord. I say, you don't hold me up and allow me to be able to bear witness that you are the God of the living. So I'm going out into that dangerous world today. There's some folks going to be running some traffic lights today. There's some folks that ain't going to be paying attention that I need your protection. My wife and kids are going to be going out. They need your protection. You don't wait till you get out there. But you start your day off with God. Yeah. And whatever takes place, God is already there with you. That's right. That's right. That's right. God will do a new thing. God is doing a new thing. Yeah. That's right. And Isaiah right. kept on, kept on preaching that exaltation. And, but also, there were some warning words that made him extremely unpopular. I like what the bishop said. That over the years, he's had to cut some time. He ain't the only one that have had to cut some time. I've had to cut some time. But it was God that said, cut that time. Uh, I didn't cut it so much because it was up to me. But I said, Lord, he said, look here. He said, yeah, I'll show up in the fear of fire and furnace. He said, so you don't have to show up in the fear of fire and furnace. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Mm -hmm. So God will pull us back huh, and give us an opportunity to keep growing. Because whether you all really realize it or not, there is some folks jealous about ministries. Y'all don't hear me? Look at them. Uh, every time I turn around, uh, 
uh, that's church folks. That ain't the folks out there in the world. That's church folks. Oh, Y'all ain't saying that. That's church folks. We're supposed to be together. Huh? But church folks get mad at church folks. Because they're doing a new thing. Huh? But let them be mad. Because with God fighting you, more than the whole entire world against you. I know I'm right about it. I told y'all I got my own amen. I'm going to post you on my day. You know what I mean? And Isaiah just kept on, even though he was unpopular. The book of Isaiah records these prophetic words of warning. But it also records Isaiah's words of promise and hope that one day, say one day, y'all. One day. The Messiah would come who would save who would comfort and who would bless his people. I know I'm right about that. As a prophet, Isaiah spoke to three historical times. In chapters 1 through 39, he preaches about condemnation. And let me say something about that real quick. Church, it's time out for you condemning yourself. It's time out for saying what you can't do in Christ Jesus. Right. Yeah. Time out for it. Uh -huh. huh? God can do anything but fail. Y'all right. right. yeah, ain't hear me. God can do anything but fail. Ain't no failure in God. So don't speak condemnation up on yourself. I can't do this. Guess what? You ain't gonna do it. Because you said you couldn't do it. But if you say, I can do it, huh? through Christ who strengthens me, we got a power source. All you got to do is be tapped in to the power source. Hooked up to the power source. And so he says here that as a prophet, he spoke these three historical times. And, and he pronounced judgment on Israel's immoral and adulterous lifestyles. Did you know that your lifestyle got something to do with how you serve God? Y'all yeah, might get mad at me and say, Bishop, he can't come back no more. Little word, I might want to leave here because I need to go back back there. They might be on sent. Uh, Brother Deacon over here, over there, the chain of locks, I can't get in. <laughs> but I'm going to be like Isaiah. I'm going to preach it in a <laughs> Immoral and adulterous lifestyle. God loves everybody. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Y'all hear me? God loves everybody. Amen. God. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. God loves the drug addict. Amen. That's right. God loves the dope dealer. Amen. That's right. God loves the prostitute. Hallelujah. God loves the gambler. God loves the homosexual, Amen. lesbian, whatever you want to title. Amen. God loves everybody. Amen. But what God doesn't love is the sin. Amen. No sin uh, is worse than another sin. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Uh, here in the state of Washington where we live, we don't live in Oregon, we don't live in Idaho, we live in Washington, and there is a petition uh, uh, for same-sex marriage. I pointed over here. Y'all see that out right there? That's a male and female. Y'all yeah, ain't saying that. Uh, there's power to, to this right here, this instrument, 
when the male hooked up with the female. Yeah, yeah, y'all ain't saying that. Yeah, yeah, can y'all see it? In your house, you got them just like that too. On your job, you got them just like that too. Huh? So, 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 what, 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 what's your point, preacher? What's your point? My point is, is that God says a man and a woman. God ain't doing a new thing with two women and two men. Y'all ain't saying that. So don't let the world fool you. Isaiah talked about the mouth of hell getting wider. Somebody got to go there. Huh? There are two places you can go to heaven or you can go to hell. Huh? Yes, God loves everybody, but sin. God hates sin. So don't let folks fool you. There's a referendum going around. Yeah. Green sheep side. Yeah. 74 yeah. side. Because yeah. next month, right. if there's not 120,000 plus signatures uh -huh. up in Olympia, Washington, yeah. they're going to force that down the church's throat. Uh -huh. Because the, 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 the attack is, and that's what it is, it's an attack on the church, is that Pastor Bishop Two men come in here and say, you have to by law marry us. God is the law. Above all laws. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying for those that do sign, and I'm still preaching the message because Isaiah talked about hell. And I'm talking about things that right now will get you in hell. Because huh? the world will try to tell us, but it's a new thing. Everybody's doing it. So if by June 7th, they don't have them signatures of that county, they're going to push it down the church throat. But if the signatures are there, it'll go on the ballot in November. Then everybody, la de da as they were saying in the military, la de da -de everybody, will get an opportunity huh, to say yes or no. Huh? Because, see, the thing about it is that I love just like God loves everybody. Huh? And I ain't trying to whoop nobody. Huh? I talk about the prostitute and the dope dealer and the thief and the murderer just like I talk about the homosexual. Sin is sin. Yeah, that's God. That's right. Hallelujah. And it's wrong. Amen. That's right. Because Webster and every other dictionary and encyclopedia it identifies marriage as a man and a woman. The sanctity of man and a woman. This initiative that they're trying to push is trying to change it. And when you try to change God's word, I for one going to stand up with God. Somebody got to go to heaven and somebody got to go to hell. And I believe Joshua was speaking for all of us when he said, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to stay with God through thick and thin. I believe Bishop and the, and the crossover sinner, we're going to stay with God's word. So Isaiah had to preach some unpopular stuff. And in the pulpits that day, that's an unpopular subject. I'm glad that God called you. See, there was no crossover Christian summer until God spoke it in your ear and then birthed it out of you. Oh, yeah. That's what happened. That's the history of it. Uh, did the same thing with living word. Uh, in other words, and I'm not knocking some churches are already established. And they solicit resumes when they're looking for a pastor. And the board will look at all the credentials to see if the credentials fit them. Y'all ain't saying that. They, they ain't worried about it fitting God. They want to 
afford to fix them. Huh? Well, where are you going with that? I'm glad that God used us to birth a ministry that's not controlled by our board. Huh? If, 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 the, if the board can hire you, God, I'm like, the board can fire you. God hiding me. And when God closed my eyes, that's when I'll be fired. Y'all understand that? So think about it when you hear folks out there talking about the good. God doing a new thing. Yeah, he doing a new thing. But think about the new thing that he's doing. The new thing he's doing is that he gave us Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Your love is So Isaiah was talking about lifestyle. And in chapter 40 through 45, Isaiah they comforted the future generation of weary exile. The Jews who thought that God had forgotten all about them. We feel like that sometimes. When we're going through. That God done forgot all about me. But let me say this real quick. God don't dwell in pity parties. You want to say God does new thing? Well, put this in your bag of rocks. God don't dwell in pity parties. He dwells in the praise. You got to praise your way past pity. You got to praise your way in a hallelujah way. That God will get the glory. of coming to us in our right now. In our right now. And tell us, look here, you keep on praising and he'll go down the highway to the not yet. Fix my problem, my circumstance, my condition, my situation. He'll fix it in the not yet because I'm stuck back down in the right now and he don't get stuck in the right now because he can go to the not yet, then he comes back to the not to the right now, huh, and grabs me by the hand and make me wipe my own forehead, wipe my own eyes, tell me everything's gonna be all right. Then he escorts me down to the not yet, and I got my blessing. Somebody even know what I'm talking about. I'm almost, I'm almost there. So Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah talks about how the Israelites felt like God had forgotten all about them. God reminds the Israelites that he is the same God. Can y'all say same God? He is the same God <laughs> that made a path through the Red Sea uh, in order for Moses and the children of Israel to get out of each land. Some of y'all don't hear the story. Yeah. Look at him. He says, he did a path through the Red Sea in order to provide an escape route for his people. Yeah. God will provide an escape route for you and me. Whatever we need to get out of, God will get us out of it. Yeah. Well, let me say this. There have been some times, and I believe it's safe to say all of our lives, even before we were saved. Right. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. Uh -huh. Ain't nothing about him and saved all their life. Uh -huh. All their life. Oh. Ain't never told a lie. Uh -huh. Ain't never did nothing that was, you know, out of order. Anybody? All have seen it come shock of the glory of God. I know I'm in the right place. Uh, but God is good. God, God, God. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. So he lets us know here that he delivered them from all of their enemies. Yes. 
we find that the primary purpose of prophetic teaching is to satisfy our curiosity. But, well, let me rephrase that because I didn't say that right. It's not to satisfy our curiosity, but it's to motivate us to want to change our lives for the Lord. That's where he was prophesied that a change would take place. In order for things to become new, a change has to take place. Uh, every year, the car dealer, they got it down packed. Every year, a new model come out, don't they? And the new model comes out before the old year's over with. You know what they saying up there? So being that Ford and Lincoln and Cadillac and Lexus and Audi and Honda and all these other name brand vehicles has got a newness taking place. Why can't the people of God renew their life with Christ on a regular basis? On a regular basis. Every day we wake up is a brand new day. A day that we never seen before. A day filled with promise, a day filled with victory, a day filled with some unknown, but we know that God is in trouble. Anybody know how long I've been preaching? I mean, since we started. How long? Body? You know, uh, Bishop, we had a clock hanging up in the church. It failed out two times. It did. And then the third time when it failed, I took it out of the sanctuary. I just took it out. God was saying, y'all ain't got the message. I keep driving this clock. <laughs> so everybody, cell phone be going off now and stuff, you know, and watch it. Everybody be doing like that right there and whatnot, you know. And, but hey, God is still in trouble. That's right. I, I wasn't trying to spend That's 40 right. minutes. And stuff. Let me say this, and we're gonna, 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 gonna close out here and stuff. By the way, I didn't tell y'all this, but I'm from Alabama by way of Georgia. Y'all can tell you kind of how I talk. They took me out the country, out the woods, out the sticks, out the snakes, out the muscadine vine. <laughs> At the cone field. Uh, they took me out of all of that. Uh, I used to wear buddies. Some of y'all know what buddies yeah, is. Some, some places they call them pie crust. Yeah. You know, the Kmart sneakers I used to wear, they, they had that hard crust that rub around. <laughs> but, but that rubber wouldn't wear out. Uh, the, 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 the canvas of it would wear out first. And I always said, if you take a pair of Chuck Taylor All Star, take the canvas and put it on a buddy, you got a best selling shoe. But point is, they took me out of the country, but you can't take the country out of me. Been around the world, seen some things. 20 years in the military, retired out here at Joint Base Lewis McCord in 1998. God been good to me. Very good to me. And then when I look at his word, I love it. I love the Lord because he heard my cry and all I cry. I love the Lord because he pitied my every groan. I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him. Isaiah says here, as God fashioned the existing heavens and earth, so he will fashion a new cosmos that will be ready for his presence and for the enjoyment of his people. The Lord commanded the people not to remember the past. This is the fulfillment of the prophecies of Isaiah. This external renewal has already begun in the life of the believer because using the same term, the apostle Paul pins this letter in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 saying, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and his name is Jesus.
Jesus. Yeah. Don't y'all fool with that. Can you yeah. say Jesus? Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Yeah. He came down through 42 yeah. generations, yeah. kicking down out of God. Yeah. He walked the dusty streets of Jerusalem. They, the Pharisees had a pity party, got mad at her, conspired against her. And that was one in the inner circle how that betrayed him. But God already knew that that was part of his strategic plan, that he would let a man that he brought life to betray him. Every now and then, Bishop, I'm not speaking this on you, but there might be somebody trying to overthrow the ministry. If I don't bend in these, keep talking to Jesus about God. When Jesus is in the area, when Jesus is in your presence, there's joy. When Jesus is around, there's peace. When Jesus is around, there's forgiveness. When Jesus is around, there's mercy. When Jesus is around, there's love. When Jesus is around, and they took love and they marched him up a hill called Calvary. And when they got him to the top of the hill, they laid him down, put nails in his right hand. They stretched him wide. They hung him high. They pierced him in the side. Blood and water came running down. You know the story. They pierced him in his side. The blood and the water. It washes us whiter than snow. But he said, Father, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. He put his head in the locks of his shoulder. He died. I said he died. He died. A rock and a rock. He lay right there. The devil said, spin the music. We can have a party now. They started partying. They were dropping it like it was hot. That was on Friday night. They was getting down. They was spinning their feet. They were talking about they dancing. They partied. And death, oh death. He said, I got Jesus. He ain't going nowhere. He said, great. No, we have it. Great said, I know we got it. But somewhere, he didn't say somewhere. Somewhere, late Saturday night and early Sunday morning, Tell said, Great. I looked around, I looked around, I looked around, and Jesus, he sat down. And there was a paper boy in the neighborhood, and he was running and he was shouting. He said, Extra, extra, extra. Read all about it. Jesus, the baby lamb of God. He's gotten up. He's gotten up with all power. Holy Ghost power. New power. New power. God power. All power. Love power. Mercy power. Mercy power. All power. All power. All power. All power. That's who we serve, the one that got all power. Yeah. Bishop, stay with Jesus. Amen. Pastor, stay with Jesus. Amen. Pastor, stay with Jesus. Amen. Church, Amen. stay with Jesus. Amen. With God for you, he's more than the world against you. Amen. May God bless you for another seven, Amen. plus another seven, Amen. plus another seven, Amen. Plus another seven, 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 plus another seven. Let us sing. We're back in the hands of our bitch for our MC. Uh, come on, come on, bless the Lord. Man, he just preached his heart out there. I tell you, he just preached the devil out of us up there. <laughs> If there's anything left, we'll take care of next Sunday. <laughs> I tell you, thank you, Pastor, Dr. Perda. I tell you, you're always welcome here, man. I tell you, 
God is good. We getting ready to go home and uh, y'all ready to go? Hey, uh, before I forget, uh, you know, we, we need everybody to go next door. Uh, they, they, they cooking something over there. I don't, I don't know what it is. I thought I knew what it was, but uh, it's something over there. And we, we, you know, when we uh, meet up and think, we don't care what it is. We just want to make sure that it's good. Amen. And we know that it's good because they've been laboring on it ever since service started. Amen. Uh, let's go ahead and take a seat. Let me just go ahead and thank a few people and we're going to get out of here. I see uh, the sound people, they just uh, just left everything unoccupied and things. I don't know what's going on. That's the new saints. <laughs> Amen. We, we need to go back to the old saints. <laughs> when we put them on the post, they stay there. They don't move until somebody come move. <laughs> these, these new Amen. These new saints, they'll make a decision by themselves and just move on. But we thank you, uh, Pastor Perder. We thank you, uh, Living Word. Amen. Well, let me get it right. Stick it up. I think y'all forgive me for using the wrong term. But stick it where we love you guys. And you know every time something is going on in the lower 40 now that you just raise the flag. Raise flag. We'll come running. Uh, really appreciate your support uh, coming out. I know your service was kind of running right along. And I just thank you guys for just taking the time. I know you had to end your service a little early because I know your pastor, he preaches. He, some some yeah. get up in him, he tend to, you know, go on for miles and miles and miles. And, you know, I was hanging around him and that stuff kind of jumped on me. So, you know, a little bit jumped on me, but, you know, when it's in you, it will come out of you. I want to thank uh, our MC today, uh, Minister Cheryl. <laughs> I tell you, I, I see that retirement coming along. I see that fire coming. <laughs> I seen something today I ain't seen in a while. I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> God is doing a new thing. <laughs> Amen. It's something about when God get in us, man. I tell you, something comes out. And I tell you, great job today. Uh, like you say, keeping time and keeping everything on course. Everything was on course till I got up here. We was running right along. But you know, when you are the bishop of the house, you get a few extra minutes. Amen. Amen. Sister Rose, we thank you for the welcome. Son, where my son at? Thank you for taking care of the church history there. Great job. They said, bring them up in the way. They should go. Although a few straight, but we're going to get them. Uh, thank you to uh, Sister Sosafina. I tell you, that's, that sister's real back then, man. I tell you, she is real. Anytime she stands up, she just speaks. And I tell you, God is doing a work in her life, and I understand why she's going through all that hell. Because when God has something huge for you, I tell you, there's all kind of stuff coming against you and things. So just hang in there. Amen. Just hang in there. Press your way. And just find your word when you feel like giving up. Just pray one more time. <laughs> uh, to Apostle Adams, who's not here, she had to make a run her son is receiving a scholarship down at, uh, down at Bishop Obi Church. So her and a few of the people went down to receive that. And uh, what a great achievement when your kids receive a scholarship. I tell you, I tell all, I tell all the kids out there, hey, you, you should go to school and not only go, but pay attention while you're there so that you can get some of those scholarships and take some of that burden off your parents. Because if you don't get a scholarship, guess what? You forces them to carry that burden and for some of it's okay but when you got disobedient kids it make you don't want to do anything for them but out of love you still <laughs> you still have to give it up but you know where there's money that's available that they give it the only thing you got to do is go out and apply yourself so let's encourage our kids to do that and to pastor elizabeth i tell you you know you are 
you one of my dream team members. I, I, I share in, uh, in our leadership class that we are building a dream team, and I haven't told anyone, but I just told one, but there's nine more left out there. Amen. And everybody should be thinking about their dream team, because if you're going to do anything for God, you're going to need some help. You're going to need some, some people that you can count on. Some people that you can just say, hey, look, let's go do this. And they say, well, you didn't told me a week ago. Well, I wasn't thinking about it a week ago. And by the way, God ain't spoke to me a week ago. He just spoke to me last night. So I'm calling you now. And that's what I need, people that will move at a moment's notice. <laughs> hey, I tell you, you know, I got to the point in my life to where, you know, I'm sold out. I don't care what the devil throw at me. Matter of fact, I just have to bring it on because you know why? I can only grow when he comes against me. And by the fact that me pressing my way and continuing on lets me know that I'm growing. If you want to ever know what to pray for me, just pray that he grow. Because as long as I'm growing, we'll be okay. It's when I stop growing, that's when you need to be concerned. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and stand to your feet. We're going to have our pastor, Perda, to come back and uh, render the benediction. I tell you, it's been a great day. We're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna move over next door, and we're gonna take care of a little bit a little business over there. We're gonna give him a love offering and things like that. That's what we do. If the missus was here, I would give it to her because I learned the order. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> hey. I I know. <laughs> I messed up a couple times, but I, fig I figured it out. Uh, after you give the uh, benediction, uh, we're going to go next door. We're going to continue on. and uh, We don't want anyone to leave. We bought all that food over there. And I tell you, we was projecting around 100, and we look like we might have half. So that means some of you are going to get two or three. Not that some of you are wasn't going to get two or three. It just means that some wasn't going to get in it. But we got you covered. Amen. Come on, receive our pastor today. Just before I give that benediction, I just want to uh, echo what the bishop just shared regarding scholarships. Uh, it's so important that uh, our young people and parents be involved in their school activities. Uh, and I was just sharing with our congregation earlier today that we had a young lady, uh, and that's her mother with that sister Mary Barbour. Uh, we're gonna uh, go to uh, Idaho, to Lewis and Idaho Friday because her daughter is graduating uh, with a bachelor's in chemistry. And then when she got there, it was by way of running track. And she got a four-year scholarship. But before she got the four-year scholarship, when she was at Stadium High School, I believe it was, running track, uh, she got a two-year scholarship and went to Des Moines and got her associate's degree. And while she was there pursuing uh, the associate's degree, running track again, uh, schools came from all around the country and she had her pick and she wanted to stay kind of close to home so she picked Idaho and she went there on a four year and now she's graduated uh, with a bachelor's in chemistry. Yeah. Chemistry. And she did it by way of scholarship. You know? And so that's what I want to encourage all young people and parents be involved in their lives and stuff, you know. Uh, they pretty, and it was a full scholarship so it took a lot of the burden off of the parents and things, you know. And they helped her grow up as a young lady in Christ real quick, too. And stuff, being away from home and stuff, you know. And, and having to encourage other young people about the goodness of the Lord. And stuff. So God is good. He used our young people. But we that are a little older than them need to encourage them. Amen. To stay with the Lord and do it the Lord's way. Not the world's way. Do it the Lord's way. Again, thank you all. Crossover. Uh, Christian Center and everyone in the sound of my voice for allowing uh, myself and Living Word Christian Church family to come over and celebrate with y'all on this beautiful occasion. Again, uh, give our uh, love to uh, Bishop Thalia upon the return and, and that Pastor Adams and others that weren't here know that we really enjoyed the fellowship and we look forward to coming back over again. And uh, I'll be sending you a letter for, for uh, uh, revival that we got coming up in June and uh, uh, at Eastside 
uh, who were gonna have the conferring of a doctor degree, honorary doctor degree from Faith Seminary. Uh, they're gonna present that one for us. So, so we thank the Lord for what he is doing and what he's already done. Uh, and continue, I solicit the prayers, keep my wife, uh, First Lady of the World Christian Church in your prayers and stuff. Okay, she's doing a mighty work over there, you know, and, and count down the days and stuff, you know. You better get my ticket to fly to Fort Bend in Georgia. Escort her back to the great state of Washington. Amen. 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 All hearts and minds clear. Again, thank you, Living Word, for coming Amen. out. Amen. Amen. All hearts and minds clear. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you today. What our eyes have seen and our ears have heard, we thank you for your word. We thank you for how you have blessed us in fellowship today. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to smile upon this ministry here at Crossroad Christian Center. Continue to build the bishop up on every side. Continue to build up every ministry on every side. Continue to bless them, Lord. With them. Lord, we thank you for what you have done. We thank you for what you're doing. And we thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for everyone that was on program this afternoon. We thank you for how you just allowed us to have a beautiful time on this beautiful day. And Lord, if it had not been for you, where would we be? And so we thank you for your grace and your mercy. And Lord, as we prepare to leave this house of prayer, we never your presence. Lord, we ask that the same angel that's been assigned to us and been with us all day long will go with us where we go and stay with us where we stay. We pray, Lord, that you will bless the food next door that's been prepared for nourishment of our bodies. And we're going to be so careful, Father God, give you all our praise and glory. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, root, and abide with us yeah. this day and forevermore. And the entire body of Christ said together, Amen. Hug somebody and tell them you love them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>